star, Melissa Gilbert. Hi, everybody. How's everybody today? Well, I hope. Great. Everybody survived the rain yesterday? Yeah. I missed it. I flew in this morning and flying out in a couple of hours. <laughs> I'm a busy, 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 recently turned 55-year-old lady. This is all 55. This arm, by the way, does not work very well. I had rotator cuff surgery in January, and oh, man. Uh, all I can say is take care of your shoulders, people. You have no idea how important they are until you can't use one for months and months and months. So I'm sort of on the disabled list at the moment, not working, well, not acting, but working like crazy. Um, but things are good, life is good. I, life for me is always good, even when it's hard, it's good. Um, I, I've made a conscious decision to take whatever comes and move on. If you know my story, you know my history, you know, well, I mean, if you watch Little House on the Prairie, you watch the greatest home movies anyone ever had. Um, and I was so blessed and so lucky to have been a part of that show and to have been cast in that show and to grow up with those people and to have such an extraordinary mentor in Michael Landon who taught me so much about life and taught me so much about being a professional in this business. And what was amazing was even back then, in the 70s and 80s, he treated all of us equally, even us kids, and it didn't matter who we were, where we were from, what gender we were, what color we were, what sexual orientation people had. Michael treated everyone with tremendous respect and admiration and love, and that really rubbed off on me. And I'm so lucky that I had him. I don't. Did any of you read my autobiography years ago, Prairie Tale, a memoir? You didn't have to, it's not a requirement, you did. It's, 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 I, I'm not a fan of that book actually, because there was a major life event that happened that I was unable to write about because I didn't find out about it till after the book was published. If you read this book, you know that while I was shooting Little House in the Prairie, when I was 11 years old, my father passed away from what at the time I was told was a stroke. And it wasn't until after the book was actually in being printed that I found out that my father had actually committed suicide and that it was kept a secret from everyone in the family and was meant to have been kept a secret forever. So when my father passed, passed away, in my experience the first time, it was a very painful time for me, but I had Michael Landon and I had the Little House on the Prairie cast and crew and they were all there and, and um, I had the work that kind of kept me going during a really, that's a really hard time to lose your daddy when you're an 11 year old girl. When I was a 45 year old woman and I had to walk through it all over again and in such a shocking way, it was hard. It was a really, really hard time for me. I had, I had panic attacks. I couldn't sleep. I was very, very emotionally unstable. My family spun out in, I gotta use this arm, in a million different directions. My mother refused to tell, she was the one who knew, who kept it from me, wouldn't tell me anything about it. And so, like I'd done in many times before, Unconsciously, I realized that the only way I could really find a place of true comfort was to know the absolute 100% truth. And that has been something I have lived by every day since then, the last 10 years. I absolutely, no matter how painful, no matter how difficult, I have to know the truth. And I couldn't get the truth because no one in my family except my mother knew my father had committed suicide, so I hired Fortunately, I was in a position to be able to afford this. I hired private detectives and I had them go and get me the police report and the coroner's report. No pho photographs, obviously. Because I wanted to understand exactly what happened so that I could find a way through the grief and through the panic and through the fear. It, it, I always felt like like my the rug was being pulled out from under me my whole life. And that's because so much of my life was these little mysterious to be kind to my mother, I'm gonna call them untruths. But to be honest, they're lies. 
And so from that day forward, I've decided no matter how difficult it is, no matter what you have to say to me, no matter what you've done, and I've raised my kids with this, no matter how hard it is, please just tell me the truth. I have to know the truth. And I have found it's so cliche. The cliches happen for a reason. The truth will set you free. And it doesn't mean that there's not pain. I mean, my God, if you're a human being, there's loss, there's grief, there's sorrow, there's physical pain, there's difficulties, there's hardships, there's certainly failures, there's mistakes, misdirections, lost opportunities. But because I chose to live from that place of truth and chose to take responsibility for how I handled myself after that, I chose to live my life as a positive person.